Hello there. So today I'll be presenting on a topic of the very diverse subject pharmacology and therapeutics, supervised by Dr. Gulam Jilani. But before jumping onto the presentation, let me first introduce you to ourselves. So this is me, Anna Babur, and today I'll be the one covering the voiceover for this video. Along with that, we also have Fatma Abid Khan, Faiza Amanat, and Javeria Ramzan. So we will be discussing every aspect of the drug, including its history, which would cover its historical background, its historical use. Then we would discuss about its molecular structure, properties, synthesis, pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, and whatnot. And eventually, we would be ending our presentation on the recent researches about the drug. So let me first introduce you with the stuff we are going to discuss today. So today, we will be presenting on a drug named lobelin. So basically, lobelin is a drug which is not that commonly used nowadays. But aiding you with its history, I'll try my best to make you familiarize with the drug. But before that, let me first have a basic outlook on the table of contents. So jumping on to the next slide, we have the history of Lobelia inflata. Obviously, because I believe there is no history that cannot be present. So the cute name of the plant Lobelia inflata, as we discussed in the previous slide, that plant was named in the honor of Matthias D. Lobel, who was a Flemish botanist. Let me make one thing clear to you here that the crown of discovery of Lobelia cannot be awarded to a single person because there was a series of scientists who worked together to discover Lobelin. So no single individual is credited with Lobelin's discovery. However, the isolation of Lobelin is credited to the German chemist Adolf, who extracted it originally from Lobelia inflata. So here we are with its historical use. During the traditional medicinal practices, lobelin was used to treat respiratory ailments and as an emetic for poisoning cases. Mid 20th century was actually a milestone because it was a time when lobelin got the status of lobelin from merely the leaves of lobelia inflata. In the mid 20th century, lobelin was introduced as a smoking cessation aid. Smoking cessation aid. Hmm. But what does this actually mean? Actually, lobelin mimics some of the effects of nicotine, which means that it can bind to nicotine receptors. This actually suppresses the craving for smoking and can help in smoking cessation. In the modern times, scientists are more focused on its use for treating neurological conditions. So here the history of the drug ends and here we have the molecular structure of the drug. So the drug has a wonderful structure consisting of a peptidine ring in the center with two phenyl groups on the terminals. Also, we can see hydroxyl and methyl groups attached with it. Furthermore, the IUPAC name, molecular formula and molecular weight have been attached for your aid. Discussing about the chemical properties of our drug, Miss Lobelin. Lobelin is moderately soluble in water but highly soluble in organic solvents, perhaps because of its non-polar nature. Generally, it's stable but can become unstable if exposed to certain conditions. It is a chiral compound and is reactive but sensitive to some reactions like hydrolysis. Synthesis, probably the most scientific experience. Anyways, it has two methods of its synthesis. The crude drug comes from Lobelia inflata, basically from its aerial parts. This was its natural extraction. If we discuss about its chemical synthesis in lab, it is synthesized by attaching phenyl and acetophenone groups with peptidine drink. This is particularly helpful because it aids in the structural modification for research purposes. So here we have an animation to help you understand the mechanism of action of the drug. This animation would help you to understand the mechanism which seems boring when read in return. So this is the same structure of lobelin as we have discussed earlier, but let me revise it briefly for your aid. So we have peptidine drink, we have two phenyl groups, including hydroxyl and methyl groups. It also shows chirality. Before getting into lobelin and its binding and blah blah, shouldn't we first polish our cell membrane concepts? Because receptor might be present on in the cell. So here we have a lipid bilayer with proteins embedded in it. They can be integral, peripheral. Along with that, we also have phospholipids in the membrane. In this animation, we are basically trying to show you two of the neurotransmitters, norepinephrine and dopamine. They can act on alpha or beta receptors depending upon immediate conditions. At the bottom, we have presynaptic and postsynaptic images of the neurons. They have alpha-4, beta-2, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors on them. This animation shows the synapse of two neurons, considered the green balls as our lobelin drug, and the pinkish-purple ones as dopamine. So basically, lobelin drug molecules act as partial agonists at nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, which directly influences the dopamine release. 
it stimulates presynaptic acid acetylcholine receptors in the brain leading to moderate dopamine release but not as strongly as nicotine this partial activation results in controlled dopaminergic response contributing its effects on the central nervous system pharmacokinetics in simple words what happens with the drug in the body it includes route of administration absorption distribution metabolism and finally its excretion from the body in case of lobulin various routes like oral iv and inhalation are used and a specific route is selected based on the immediate conditions when taken orally it simply absorbs from the gastrointestinal tract while in case of iv or inhalation it is rapidly available for absorption and also bypasses the first pass effect after absorption it distributes in the body because of the low volume of the distribution it is distributed throughout the body including key tissues in brain but it exhibits low to moderate protein binding so basically most of the drug is free and another fact lobulin can also cross your blood brain barrier during metabolism it undergoes the primary metabolism in liver and also undergoes the first pass effect the half life of lobulin is approximately 1 to 2 hours and eventually it is excreted from the body in the form of urine pharmacodynamics in simple words what the drug does to our body so basically lobulin acts as a partial agonist at the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors it stimulates the dopamine release as we discussed previously in the animation but overall this partial agonist activity of lobulin is not as strong as nicotine some of the major pharmacological effects performed by lobulin is dopamine release serotonin modulation respiratory stimulation cough suppressant nicotine like effects cardiovascular effects anti inflammatory and anti oxidant effects every image has two sides welcome to the dark aspect of ms lobulin sounds scary so it might cause cns stimulation causing nausea vomiting headache dizziness restlessness adverse effects might include hallucinations confusion seizures etc due to the over stimulation of central nervous system it can also lead to toxicity in the cardiovascular system or respiratory diseases so lobulin in high doses can be toxic particularly because of the fact that it is a nicotinic receptor antagonist being that it has the potential to produce nicotine like toxicity so it can cause salivation sweating nausea vomiting tremors constricted pupils convulsions and can also cause death if given in lethal doses despite the fact that this drug is not being widely used nowadays researches are still continued on it probably to get a better drug with reduced side effects for example treating methamphetamine addiction including treating the neurodegenerative diseases like parkinsons and alzheimers also examining the structural analogs of lobulin for a better drug in the future now apart from all that boring stuff our miss lobulin also has interesting facts like being called puke because of its use for emetic properties it has also been listed as prohibited in sports and other interesting fact is that it was withdrawn from the market because of its inefficacy finally concluding all about our miss lobulin it is a multifaceted drug it also acts as a partial agonist at nicotine acetylcholine receptors it is also used as an aid in smoking cessation and also used in respiratory stimulation here let me highlight that lobulin is not that much used nowadays because of its side effects here are the references attached along with so this was all about our beloved drug miss lobulin you can ask if you have any queries thank you so much i'll get going hope you enjoyed